In this tutorial, you're going to learn the difference between MailChimp audiences and MailChimp tags and how to use them successfully in your MailChimp account. This is part of the MailChimp playlist on my channel where you learn everything you need to know to get started with MailChimp. That's linked to in the description down below. And also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. And if this is your first time here, my name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. The difference between an audience and tags is quite substantial inside MailChimp. An audience is everybody in your MailChimp account. Every single person who has engaged with your business and whose information is contained inside of MailChimp, that's your audience. It encompasses everybody. And pretty much every MailChimp account is going to have a single audience. There are very few cases where you want to have more than one, very few. A good example would be if you have buyers and vendors in your business and you don't want to confuse the two you could have a separate audience for each to have two separate audiences or multiple audiences you have to have a paid account the free account of MailChimp just gives you one audience and pretty much all businesses just need one audience from my experience at least for my businesses i have just one audience per business if you start getting into multiple audiences for each business it just gets too complicated the audience itself is complicated enough you don't have to make it more complicated by adding more audiences so if i go to my audience over here and I go to all contacts, this is all the people in my audience, at least in this demo account. These are all demo signups. I got bored of using my own data and just made up a bunch of stuff as I went. Just testing it, just doing videos, things like that. So there's 22 contacts and 21 of these are subscribers. These are actual links. So if I click on 22 contacts, it shows all 22. Click on 21 subscribers, shows the 21 subscribers. And within this audience, tags are used as an organizational mechanism. Here we have tags in this column right here. And we have tags assigned based on activities these people performed within our business. For example, homepage signup. This is someone who signed up on a form that lives on the homepage of my dummy website. And this is probably not the most ideal tag because someone who signs up from the homepage versus from the contact page I'm not really going to want to communicate with them differently because I don't really know what their interests are. All I know is they sign up on the homepage or the contact page. Not a huge difference there. But if I were to use tags, for example, on specific categories on my website, so a form that's on the car racing category of my website has a tag applied to anyone who signs up with car racing category sign up. Or if there's a ski jumping category, it would be ski jumping category sign up. Or if I have a free ebook I give away, I would have the name of the ebook inside the tag and say requested or downloaded. I even get pretty granular sometimes where I have when someone signs up for an ebook, I will have the name of the ebook and then requested. And then if they download it, there's a separate tag because you can tag based on people clicking inside of emails. And I assume if they click the download button, they're going to download the ebook. And so if they click the download button inside the email, I'll tag them again. And it's all automated. They'll be tagged with name of the ebook downloaded. And so I can see how many people requested it of the people who requested it, how many people actually downloaded it. And that's important information. You can also have tags for products you sell. If you have people who buy products in your business, you might want to know how many each person has bought or which ones each person has bought. So you can promote other products to them they haven't bought yet. Or if they're consumables, you could even have it, it tagged with what they bought and the date they bought it. This is more complicated, but you could tag them with the date that they bought something. And if that product's usually consumed within six months, you could have automations running inside MailChimp that email people six months after the tag date. Like I said, that one's a little more complicated, but that is totally possible with tags. So an audience is everybody in your MailChimp account and tags are a way to organize audiences into groups that help you speak to them on a more personalized manner because you know something about their interests, either their interests based on what they do on, their, on your website or based on the products they buy, or you can even manually tag people if you talk to them on the phone or reach out to them in some other way and you know information about what they like and what they need, you can tag them with those specifics as well. And then you can email those tag groups directly. For example, if I go to tags over here, I can go to the blog sign up tag, go to send, 
and send a regular campaign, send a plain text campaign, send an RSS campaign directly to everybody within that tag. You can also have automations that run if you have a paid account, and these will do specific actions when someone is tagged with a specific tag. So if you talk to someone on the phone, you can say phone call completed. Maybe that's one of the steps in your business. You add that tag to that person, and then maybe they'll get a follow-up email thanking them for their time. Maybe you'll send them a postcard in the mail, which you can also do through MailChimp. And so those automations can be based on tags. So that's the difference between an audience and a tag. You also have groups and segments as a way to organize your contacts as well as tags. You can use all three in conjunction to organize your audience. I have separate videos for each of those things, for the audience, for the tags, for the segments, and for the groups. And I encourage you to check out all those videos in the playlist for all the MailChimp videos linked in the description down below so that you have a firm understanding of how all these things will help your business and keep you organized. Because if you have a lot of contacts, being organized is very, very important. Next up, check out this playlist right here, which is all about MailChimp. I keep referencing this playlist in these videos and it has everything you have to know to get started with MailChimp. So make sure you check that out and also download this PDF right over here. It is the top most important email sequences every business needs. It's a smart PDF. So when I update it and add new sequences, they will be auto updated to your copy of this document, which is pretty awesome. And if you haven't done so yet, also click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.